Start. Hello, good lemon. Welcome to the dream. What? What? Where, where, where am I? Hush. Shut up. Shut your little mouth. I'm here in this dream to look after you. You will hunt beasts, and I will be here for you to embolden your citrus spirit. That, uh, that, that's great and all, but those beasts you mentioned? There's, uh, there's one in the room. It's getting closer. Hello? Hello? Oh, shit, yeah. Sorry, here, I'll get that for you. Uh, <clears throat> now then, good lemon. Go forth into the waking world. Do what must be done. Hey, it's Lemon. Welcome to the Backlogs. After several months, it's finally time. Time to continue the Firebomb Saga in all its burning glory. This time, in Bloodborne. You all know the deal by now, but for those of you new to the series, let's go over the rules. First, we can only use Molotovs and Molotov accessories to deal direct damage. This being Bloodborne, we have several options at our disposal. More on that later. Second, no glitches or exploits. And third, we have to beat the game to succeed the run. We'll do our best to beat every boss we can, but I've played enough FromSoft games to know that I shouldn't get my hopes up in that regard. Let's meet today's poor unfortunate soul. There he is, Perry Hotter, our cruel fate hunter. May the old ones have mercy on what little soul he may possess. With our character created, it's time to get moving. While Perry makes his way to the first lamppost, let's talk strategy. Obviously, the first thing we're going to need to do is get back to the dream with some blood echoes. From there, the little ones will be able to sell us the lifeblood of this run, aka Molotovs. After we've got some Molotovs, we can see what kind of damage we're looking at this time around. Should be interesting. Here we are, home sweet home. Our base of operations in spiritual prison. Eh, at least it looks nice. We take the free weapons from the little ones, then immediately run over to the bath messengers where we can sell said weapons for Molotovs. By the looks of things, Molotovs scale very strongly with Arcane, so we'll be dumping pretty much every blood echo we can spare into that one. Which, considering Molotovs are 180 echoes each, won't be very many. Oh, and it looks like our old friend Inventory Limit is back. I guess we can only carry 10 at a time. That's gonna be a problem. But that's a problem for future Lemon to figure out. For now, it's time to sprint. I scoot my glutes past all the enemies I can, opting to dodge past them rather than fight. Molotovs are too expensive at the moment, and while there's a few Blood Echo consumables around the map that I could pop, I'd rather hold on to those until I really need them. There's also another Molotov accessory we can grab while we're out and about oil urns. There's only two of them out in the wild, so we'll have to make them count if we use them. I go out of my way to grab some extra fashion for myself, dodge past Miss Piggy to grab the Saw Hunter badge for no particular reason, then unlock the gate to what will be our home for the next few hours. Yes, you heard me right. Hours. Prepare yourself for the worst. Do I have to? A hunter must hunt. <sighs> I know, Eileen. I know. So, let's talk about where several of my hours are going to. This bridge here is full of enemies, but is also home to a lovely burning ball trap that just so happens to hit almost all of them on its way down. Not only that, but if we scoot past the troll who pushed the ball, we can convince him to chase us down the ladder if we insult the quality of his overalls enough. Put that all together, and you've got enough free blood echoes to get two or three Molotovs, depending on how many enemies you catch in the trap. It's not much, but it's honest work. And considering there's no enemies around worth more than 180 blood echoes, at least for now, this is basically the only way of regenerating our stock that we've got. You know what? I'm feeling spicy. Let's see how we shape up against our first boss, the Cleric Beast. At our current level, we're only doing about 186 damage per Molotov, for a grand total of 1,860 if we hit every shot. Our boy the Cleric Beast has 3,015 HP, which means we're not only going to need to grind for Molotovs, but we're going to need to grind for levels now as well. Hooray! Oh hey, the reincarnation of the Firebomb Goddess is back. We should probably go say hello. What is it, Good Lemon? Do you require aid? Actually, yeah. Think you could give me a few free levels or bombs? That'd be helpful. Mm. No. Okay, cool, thanks. I grind a bit to get my arcane up to level 20, then head back to the Cleric Beast to test out our new stats. 221 damage. Still not enough. Or at least it wouldn't be, if not for a few more mechanics we need to consider. Hit an enemy while they're passive, and you'll get your base damage. Hit them while they're jumping around or attacking, though, 309. That's right, there's counter damage for Molotovs. As if this run wasn't complicated enough. Guess it's back to the drawing board. Whoa, 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 whoa. I try again at 25 arcane, and we're up to 251 damage. That's pretty darn close to getting the job done without counter damage. 
if we can get a few counter hits in, we can probably finish him off. But unfortunately, it's not that easy to time his attacks, so more often than not, we're just getting base damage. Not yet. Not yet. Well, that's gonna get annoying. So you know how whenever you use the Hunter's Mark or respawn at a lantern, you refill your blood vials and bullets? Guess what doesn't refill? Literally anything else! Which means every time I fail a boss attempt, I have to sit through three loading screens. One death screen, one loading screen back to the Hunter's Dream, and one back to the boss arena. And no, this isn't a fancy PS4. I've got the good old fashioned minute long load times. Combine that with the fact that I can't rejuvenate health for being aggressive, since I'm not using any melee weapons, and you've got a frustratingly long game cycle. In any case, Cleric Beast isn't happening without some more levels, so let's try a different boss instead. Gascoin. You, uh, you working out some pent up stress over there, bud? I mean, I get it. Do what you gotta do. Gascoin has three stages. Two where he's a hunter like me, using weapons and guns, and one where he transforms into a beast, as one does. Rather than deal with him dodging and shooting at me, I opted to use the music box three times in a row instead, which sends him straight to phase three. This is good for two reasons. First, he's slightly more predictable in his beast state, at least for me anyway. And two, beasts take extra damage from fire. The tricky part, however, is finding a break in his attacks where he doesn't move too quickly. Molotovs are a little wonky when it comes to aiming, so the longer he stays still, the better. Eventually, I found that sticking tight to him during some of his slower swipes gave me the window I needed. Now, if I could just get my aim to be more consistent, everything would be great. It takes a few tries, but eventually I get Gascoigne to play nice with literally no Molotovs left to spare. Everyone wave goodbye to our sanity. It's only gonna get worse from here. I said wave! With that done, though, the game is starting to open up a bit more, which means we can hopefully upgrade our arsenal to the point where we can make some more progress. I sprint my way past multitudes of enemies, speedrunning to the best of my ability, until I finally make my way to Old Yarnum. Now, if only I could read. Oh, is that what that was? Yeah, no, I need stuff. I don't have time for this painted world nonsense logic. Oh, well, thank you for saying so. Well, that's certainly ominous. Oh god, hit the deck! Well, despite him clearly not wanting us around, we're gonna have to talk to Jura one way or another. The man has the key to unlocking more Molotovs and oil urns at the store, and we're gonna need every bit we can get. Oh god. Jura, listen, can you just give me your badge? No one needs to know, you can just- <coughs> Needless to say, Jura was a little less cooperative than I would have liked. And while I know you can technically talk sense into him if you do some sequence breaking, I don't really feel up to that particular challenge. And since he's a hunter, he'll dodge all my firebombs if we try to fight him that way. So it's time for some more... intricate tactics. Originally, I was going to try and sneak him towards the edge, hoping he'd just throw himself off as FromSoft enemies are like to do, but then he just... stopped. Finally, now we can have a civilized fucking conversation. Wait, no, stop, I'm sorry! It was never truly consistent, and he would break out of it eventually, but after about 20 deaths or so, I finally convinced Jura to step out onto the ledge. Bet you can't step out farther than I can. Jura? Where are you going? Oh god, wait, no! So, yeah. Jura wasn't going to just walk off the edge, I was gonna have to figure something else out. It would take all of my power, all of my cunning, but with enough time and skill, I would... We did it! Shut up, it counts. We collect our well-earned powder keg hunter badge, come back to the bath messengers, and 400, 680? What kind of bait and switch bullshittery is this? What do you mean Molotovs are 380 now? They were 180 yesterday! Don't you just love it when real world problems seep into your virtual escapism? I know I do. But you know what'll make you feel better? Some pipey cop Molotovs to the face. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Several thousand souls worth of equipment later, and the cleric beast goes down. Eh, it's not to think too hard about it, honestly. But, after grinding out the old Yarnum werewolves for an hour or three, I think we're finally ready for the Bloodstar Beast. This should be interesting. Something I've begun to notice about the bosses of Bloodborne. The game is so melee focused that the boss AI seems to always focus on closing the gap between you. Which means tossing pots or Molotovs from long distance is actually relatively safe. Fair trade, if you think about it, considering the only thing I can do when up close is scream and dive away in fear. On my first attempt, I was actually able to get the Bloodstar Beast down to its third phase. But I made one crucial error. I used all my long-range Molotovs in Phase 1 and 2. And now I get poisoned just by standing close to the boss. Come on, Lemon. Just two more close calls. Two more and we can call it done. Come on, eat the medicine. Eat the medicine. Curse you! Curse you! Needless to say, I learned from that mistake. And knowing is half the battle. The other half is not getting your face ripped off by this infernal beast of burning! Eventually, I opted for a mixed approach. 
Taking advantage of his relatively passive state in Phase 1, you can just lob oil and Molotovs up until he gets to Phase 2, at which point his aggression will make him very susceptible to rope Molotovs. Just wait for him to begin loping his way towards you, toss a payload behind you as you saunter away, and reap the rewards. Plus our beast done. That wasn't so bad. Oh no. With the BSB defeated, I ground up a few more werewolves to restock all my bombs, then hop skip jumped my way right into Yahargul. Not a whole lot to do here at the moment. I collected the moon rune to help with future grinds, but opted to leave our boy Carl alone for now. Just in case. With that done, the upper areas of the church are now open, where we've got overexcited grandpas, poor death perception as far as the eye can see, and the prettiest little doll you've ever known. Adorable. And while I know there's a way around the gate, I couldn't remember where it was, so I just ground a bit longer and got the key. Because capitalism is always the answer. Several slightly confusing elevator rides later, and I arrive at the Witches of Hemwick. The damage itself is pretty decent, but the Witches do have the annoying habit of nullifying the damage of my last thrown cocktail. I also made the crucial mistake of coming into the fight with Insight, which means I now have to dodge around the Scythe monsters as well. Inevitably, this led to the first Witch getting revived before I could finish off the second which we absolutely cannot have. My damage limits are stretched to the max as it is. After buying a few blood cocktails that I will never use from the bath messengers, I tried the witches again. I took my time, only attacking once between each teleport, and despite the witch getting revived again, I was able to keep both witches at low enough health that it didn't matter in the end. Rune tool acquired. Grinding just got about 10% easier. But with the witches out of the way, it's time for the boss that was a complete brick wall for me when I first played Bloodborne, Viker Amelia. Weirdly enough, this is another one of those fights where the enemy AI doesn't quite know what to do if you're far away. So long as I keep my distance, I can lob Molotovs with little to no interruptions. It took a try or two, but just like the other bosses, it came down to learning which phase was best for rope Molotovs and which phase was best for the regulars. In the end, Viker Amelia goes down without too much struggle. Should have used this build back when I first started, apparently. I touched the glowing skull, you know, as one does, learned the super secret phrase to get into the Forbidden Woods and I'm then given a wonderfully gruesome gift, a blood drunk hunter's eye. Gee, thanks. For those that don't know, this is the item necessary to access the DLC. So after taking a ride on the Amygdala Express, we magically arrive in the hunter's nightmare. It's got all sorts of stuff inside. Angry hunters, beast men that hit a little too hard for my current level, and the real reason I'm even braving this hellish landscape, delayed Molotovs. Now, it's important to note that much like oil urns, you can't just find these beautiful machinations out in the wild. The ones I just found are pretty much it. No, what you need is another hunter's badge. Give you one guess who might have it. As with all hunters, trying to kill him with Molotovs alone isn't gonna cut it. He's too fast, too nimble, and can kill you in two hits or less. Maybe we should come back when we're a bit stronger. Always good to have options. Besides, we don't need more explosives quite yet. Better to wait until they're necessary. This could take a while. Ah, finally. Took you long enough. Or maybe a bit too long. I'm sure he's fine. After spending an enjoyable amount of time in the Forbidden Woods, I wiggle my way through the underground poison caves to get back to Yosefka's clinic. Oh, hey, I was just talking about you. Sorry, I forgot my letter here when I left earlier, just grabbing it before I forget it again. Okay, bye! Anyway, with those Kanehurst summons, I can finally go to Kanehurst Castle. There's not a whole lot there for me, but hey, at least we'll get there in style. Thanks for the ride, horsies. Oh, so they're fine. Everything's fine. You know, you can scrub all you want, but it's not gonna get the endless weeping out of the tiles. Trust me, I would know. There's not much to see here. Just a bunch of angry ghosts who demand retribution. You know, the usual. But there is one thing. One of my least favorite bosses of the game, Martyr Logarius. I don't have a particular reason why I dislike him, but he's just a boss that I struggle with. We all have at least one. Alrighty, let's see what we're dealing with here. Well, that's not gonna work now, is it? We, uh, we're gonna have to come back to him later. Like, a lot later. After trying out a few new farming methods, which worked well enough, it's time. Time to face all the power and malice that Sauron himself sees fit to send before us. The Nazgul. Okay, that didn't work. Um, how about Carl? Hey Carl. While Carl's hitboxes are pretty janky, the few times I do hit him are good enough. He's brittle when it comes to heavy damage, so whenever I'm able to get an oiled up Molotov off, he's more or less guaranteed to buckle. 
which then sets him up for a few rope molotovs to the face. Honestly, we probably should have come here sooner. This fight was a complete pushover. No hard feelings though, Carl. You did your best. That said, we're at a bit of a brick wall. The only bosses left to us are the Nazgul of the Forbidden Woods, Logarius of the Massively Bloated Health Pool, and the bosses of the DLC, all of which have too much health for me to handle at the moment. But while I was wandering hopelessly through the DLC, a thought shot through my brain. An entire magazine of thoughts, actually. What if, and I'm just spitballing here, but what if we turn the traps of the DLC against the beastly hunter who's so jealously hiding my time Molotovs? I mean, it's not direct damage, so it's not against the rules, and this run is already no stranger to letting traps do some of the talking. The damage itself is no laughing matter either. If lined up just right, we could be looking at 2,000 damage in the blink of an eye. The only question that remains is how long will the beastly hunter follow me? Well, with a little encouragement, he's more than happy to work his way up the stairs and out of the house. And with a little more encouragement, he's actually willing to enter the kill zone. This just might work. Now, I did goof up the first attempt that got this far. I kinda broke one of the guns before we got here. But the results are pretty damn optimistic. Wait, what? How did you get back here so fast? I literally led you to the other side of the- I'll spare you the death montage. It took well over 30 tries to get it exactly right. And over three hours of dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Ding. But eventually, eventually, we did it. Beastly Hunter down, firing hammer badge acquired. With that prize in hand, we can finally go buy our delayed Molotovs, both the normal and rope variety. <laughs> well, that's gonna take a few hours of grinding. Before we do any of that though, we should probably at least test them out. Alrighty then. There we are, 295 damage. I can work with that. It's even somewhat consistent. Seems like the enemies don't pay much mind to them after the initial toss, which helps a lot. This is even more true of the roped version. Just toss it behind you as they're a safer distance behind you than you would normally need, and you can get some free hits. You know, if they weren't such fucking wiggle worms about everything, this might actually be an easy fight at this point. Shame they like to dodge my attacks so much. Catch them in the middle of an animation though, and you've got a free hit. Better yet, catch them in the middle of an animation and when they're all clustered together, and you'll get a massive amount of damage in. This was supposed to be a test run, since I wasn't fully stocked. But somehow, some way, I actually pulled it off with the last Molotov in my arsenal. Hot damn. No rest for the wicked though. I talked to Exposition Grandpa. Mm-hmm, yes, thank you, a fantastic wealth of knowledge you are. Then raced my way down into the bottom of the lake to face off against Rom. Turns out, Rom is a bit of a pushover when it comes to Molotovs. Wouldn't have guessed that, but hey, I'm not complaining. I guess he's only really difficult if you have to play football to get close to him. Attacking from a range makes this fight considerably easier. Um, that's American football for you folks overseas. You know, the heathen one. In any case, it isn't long before Rom goes down with little to no fight. First try Rom, let's go. Hey lady, what are you looking at? Oh, yeah that checks out. Not quite sure how I missed that. But with the blood moon fully risen, it's time for the last portion of the game. The part where everything is overly expensive and everything has far too many arms and or legs for my liking. Before we go diving into Yahargul again though, let's go back to Ligarius. With our newfound quantity of 40 Molotovs per attempt, maybe we'll have a chance this time. This attack here has an extremely long animation, so it's the ample time to throw oil or Molotovs. And it's actually incredibly easy to bait out. So much so that I was able to get him into Phase 2 with only about 5 Molotovs and oil urns. Phase 2, however, is a completely different story. He's constantly moving, so it becomes nearly impossible to get a Molotov to connect without taking damage at the same time. Not only that, but I don't think we're quite at enough damage to complete this boss yet. Closer, yes, but still not quite there. Anyway, back to Yahargul. Golly gee, can't wait. There's only one thing I need to focus on here, and that's the One Reborn. A complete mishmash of a creation, born from the twisted mind of Miyazaki and the uncaring void itself. A lot of people tried to warn me that this would be a brick wall if ever there was one. To which I say one thing. Ye of little faith! You think this abomination of a boss can stop me? Well it can! Almost immediately. But he's big and slow. Which means drive-by Molotov runs are absolutely a workable strategy. And if you're able to get enough of them off, you can even stagger the beastie. Combine that with a few Molotovs to the face, and you're looking at some massive damage. How is this boss supposed to be a brick wall again? I mean, yeah, he physically hits as hard as one, but what doesn't nowadays? And yeah, it spits massive pools of acid that can liquefy your bones if you're not paying attention, but again, what doesn't nowadays? A little bit of hyperaggression, an extreme amount of liquid fire, and about six tries later, and once again the age-old adage of this channel rings true. It always seems impossible until it is done. 
ye of little faith! So with that out of the way, let's move on to the dreams of those that came before, shall we? We're not gonna spend much time here if we can help it. I make my way past the Gudens, witness the most horrifying animation of the entire game, <laughs> then arrive at the Nightmare Frontier. I hate this place. But there's one stop we have to make while we're here. Amygdala. Let's see how we're looking. Huh. Oh wait, that was its legs. Just gotta aim for the head is all. So yeah, we've got plenty of damage. The problem I'm running into, however, is phase two and three. Amygdala's attacks get a little more frantic and sporadic with each phase, which makes it harder and harder to land hits. Combine that with the fact that hitting the head or arms with anything other than normal Molotovs is a bit difficult at that point, and you've got a problem. A problem that, thankfully, we can now mitigate. It's difficult, but we can still get a little bit of damage on Amygdala's arms if we time it just right. A task much more easily said than done, especially when you have to resort to timed bombs. It took some time and watching, but eventually I found some animations that could work. My success rates were still pretty sporadic, but it was enough. With Amygdala's health brought to near half, it was just a matter of connecting my remaining Molotovs through phases two and three. Patience and persistence, that's all it took. One nightmare down, the nightmare of Mensis was more of the same. You know, with the bursting of blood spears from your body and all. But I've got two stops to make on this vision quest, and Mikolash is the first. Like other hunters, Mikolash has an annoying tendency to dodge away from my bombs. And even when they hit, they do a surprisingly little amount of damage. I swear, if Mikolash is the end of this run, I'm gonna be so pissed. I didn't fight my way through the very definition of abominations just to be stopped by a man wearing a birdcage for a hat. I was able to get him into his second phase, but my stock was getting pretty low at that point. Combine that with the fact that he loves to just auto-kill me with that cosmic blast of his, and I don't think we're winning this one just yet. I have been slowly increasing my arcane stat this entire time, so I decided to give Vulgarius another go. Surely by now we've got enough damage. I even learned, and used my delayed Molotovs for the first phase. That way all of his zooming around would be less of a problem. Unfortunately, in phase two, his hitbox is a bit... picky. You have to really get up in there, like toss the bombs under his skirt if you can which is fine for rope Molotovs, but makes the delayed versions a complete mess. But I've got all my oil urns and throwables still available, so we should be just fine. What? What? He's immune to throwables in phase two. He's immune to throwables in phase two? What is this? Not a single wiki article mentioned this. Hello? Hello? Okay, so, Lagarius is a no-go, which means it's time to visit the upper cathedral ward. After getting some very unwanted physical contact, I forced my way into the Lumenflower Gardens and found the Celestial Emissary. Gentlemen, it took me a hot minute to remember how to determine which one was the leader, but eventually it came back to me. And after doing enough damage to evolve him into his final form, it just became an easy game of keep away with a healthy dash of Molotov cocktails. Easy boss, really. Nothing to write home about. Oh, right, I forgot I can't read. Up next is Abrietas. Abritas? Abiertos? Eh, mac and cheese. Mac and cheese here has the wonderful problem of being too big and slow for her own good, which makes her a prime subject for Molotov drive-bys. She even breaks down a bit if you do enough damage, which means you've got more than enough time to just unleash everything you've got. Normally, a boss going into their third phase is a bad thing, but mac and cheese doesn't move all that much between her phases, so just shove as many rope Molotovs as you can her direction, and you'll be sitting pretty for the final phase. Not gonna lie, I almost panicked when I saw the purple dome floating around her. Started having the Garius flashbacks but a quick test urn to the face got rid of any fears I might have had. And despite a valiant final attempt to murder me, Lunchables goes down on the first try. Don't tell anyone, but the secret ingredient to every meal is always cheese. Ugh, oh boy, all right, back to Mikolash. He still sucks, but after a little bit of testing, it turns out I can just push him gently into a corner in the first phase, which makes my delayed Molotovs much more consistent. Add a dash of ring around the madman in phase two, and I think we can do it. The numbers don't lie. So long as I can get solid hits with the regular mollies, we'll be good to go. Just wait for the tentacle attacks and everything will be all right. What? Where the hell did that one come from? All right, Lemon, it's all good. You just need to... <sighs> Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah, that's definitely a mood. This run has been a complete nightmare. Anyway. I go around collecting the remaining umbilical cords. No, I didn't ask why, and neither should you. Then go after the last boss of the entire base game. Murgo's Wet Nurse. My, you're a big one, aren't you? Right, let's see what the damage is. Huh. 
Let's see, multiply by 30, carry the one. Yep, that's doable. Just gotta be absolutely perfect and hit every single Molotov. Damn it! So, let's talk. This boss, she's a bad time. There's the obvious problems, like her attacks hitting pretty damn hard, and the slightly less obvious problems, like her being able to dodge weirdly quicker than I'd like. But the obvious multi-armed elephant in the room is that the window opportunity, it's slim. You've got about 600 damage worth of wiggle room. That's two Molotovs, with oil urns factored in. Yeah, good fucking luck. At least, that's what I thought. But then this happened. Where did that extra damage come from? Think all the way back to the beginning of the video. Remember Cleric Beast? You guessed it, counter damage. Now, Bloodborne has a tendency to play a little fast and loose with its rules for counter damage. Hits that should count, sometimes don't. And then other times, you get things like this. Why? Where did that damage come from? What did I do different? And the fact of the matter is, I don't even know. I wish I did, but I don't. If I did, it would give me a more accurate idea of how many Molotovs I can miss before I have to restart the fight to avoid wasting my very, very expensive Molotovs. Maybe it's wounding, maybe it's backstab damage, who fucking knows. All I know is that this boss is going to be a very bad time, no matter how you look at it, and that I need a break. Time for something completely different. Hey, you kids, do you like horses? Well, you shouldn't. Because I have no idea what else to do, I decided to give the first DLC boss a try, Ludwig the Accursed. And good news! He takes 300 damage if you hit him, 400 damage if you break his body, and an additional 500 after that if you can actually hit whatever body part you broke. Good luck trying to distinguish which limb is which, though. Oh, and did you know? He's got 16,658 health. Which, if my calculations are correct, is a real fucking lot! Nope, not doing it. You can't make me. I won't do it! So, with that hope smashed to bits, it's back to fighting the old one's lawnmower. But don't worry, I've been practicing. Rope Molotovs for the first half of phase one. Delayed Rope Molotovs whenever she does this particular attack, with minimal risk of getting cut to ribbons and maximum chance of her taking a little extra counter damage. Run in a circle while hugging the walls of the arena like a madman whenever the purple fog comes out to avoid getting caught by her double. Then continue to lure out that one particular animation with the remainder of your delayed Molotovs. Once you're out of those, it's back to Old Faithful. Throw oil urns whenever you get a chance, then follow up with a Molotov, preferably during an attack animation for a little extra wiggle room. Repeat ad nauseum until you've run out of literally everything. And if you're lucky, and I mean incredibly lucky, you'll be able to kill Murgo with the very last one of your beautiful, infallible Molotovs. Shh, you'll wake the baby. We'll celebrate back at home. What? what the? Who lit the entire house on fire? As if I have to ask. Goddess, what have you done? Oh, hello, good lemon. Are you cold? Not particularly, no. Mind explaining what's going on? Dawn will break soon. This night and this dream will end. Go on, good lemon. Bring them fire and bring them flame. Right. Well, there's not a whole lot left we can do. Maybe a few chalice dungeons? I mean, you never know. Maybe the secret sauce we need to beat the last few bosses is in there. I'm just gonna speed run my way through these. We're gonna get enough dungeon crawling on the Elden Ring firebomb run as it is. And I don't want to deal with any more of that than I have to. All right, the first boss of the Chalice Dungeon is very excited, apparently. Jesus, give a man a minute, would you? But yeah, no. Turns out the undead creatures don't like being set on fire. Never would have guessed. Moving on. The second boss is the Merciless Watchers. And while there are three of them, one Molotov is enough to decimate their health bar. Clump them all together, and there's not much more to say. And boss number three, and the final boss of this particular Chalice, is... Gehrman, please, let me out. I don't want to be here anymore. Everything hurts. I just want to go home. Dear, oh dear. What was it? The hunt? The blood? Or the horrible dream? Yes. All of it. All of the above. Oh, it doesn't matter. You can walk? Also, why do I hear boss music?
Okay, one final push. We can do this. Garmin is a literal combination of everything we've struggled against thrown into one deadly package. He has a bloated health pool, a disappointingly small and shoddy hitbox, he's a hunter, so he dodges any time you throw anything, and his attacks kick like a goddamn mule, and to top it all off, if you happen to throw a delayed Molotov onto a rock, it just... <laughs> but did that stop me? I mean, it should've. But did it? Yes. Then no. Then maybe. Then yes. But something. Something kept drawing me back. Something wouldn't let me go. It didn't matter how much blood I shed, how many times I begged to be released, how much hate, hate I felt for this particular boss. No. No, 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 no. There's a pattern to it. Yes, a rhythm. Ebb and flow, just like water. The water can do it. Why can't we? You see? You... You don't see. It's simple, really. Just, just stay here. Stay on the dirt. The dirt is our friend. No risk of malfunctions on the dirt. No. No, 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 no. Not our friend, the dirt. But what about phase two? Two. <laughs> Two is easy, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Just just step away. Away from Garman. Chairman. Garish Chairman. Burning. Burning! Uh, you, you can't hear it, can you? You can't, can't hear the way the water drips, even down deep below at the bottom of the sea. Drip. Drop. Drip. Drop. Oh, but phase three. Yes, phase three. One plus two is three, of course. What, what else would it be? And just so. Just so. Why, we're, we're just back to phase one again, aren't we? Wait for the Reaper, and the Reaper only. Never the sword. And remember your friend the dirt. Very important, friends. Can't forget them. Keep you safe. Keep you whole. Keep you somewhere to go. In the end. But what is an end? Can, can you define it? Write it? Create it? Maybe. But maybe not. Maybe three months is too long. Maybe you should give up. Maybe this victory, if you can even call it that anymore, maybe it only matters to you. And can you even be certain of that anymore? Can you be certain of anything? I, I don't know anymore. I don't know anything anymore. All I know, can know, is that the night and the dream are long. What what happened? I think I blacked out for three months there. That was weird. In any case, that's it. Bloodborne completed with only Molotovs and Molotov accessories. What a ride. We weren't able to defeat every boss, but we were able to get more than I thought we could. That said, I think that run was probably the closest I've come to ever being broken. I, uh, I think I need to recharge my batteries. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, those two. That said, we're almost done. Almost. But before we push forward Elden Ring, there's one last bit of fog that must be cleared. I'll see you all soon.